So we are going to start off with our new business. Um, and I would like to, I mean, we'd all like to introduce everyone to Jordan, um, to the Aspen team and to the community. So um, I'm going to let Jordan tell you a bit about herself and um, what her visions are for the community. Hey Morgan, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm the new Aspen product librarian. I'm in the middle of week three. So I've been here for a few weeks. Um, I am a librarian and I've been in libraries for about 12 years. I spent the first half of my career working in um, public libraries of every size, as well as a mixed type library consortium. Um, it was my job there in those jobs to work with software vendors on what the library needed. So basically exactly the seat that you're in right now, uh, that's what I used to do for libraries. Um, and then after that, I kind of moved into product. And I know some of you um, from kind of a previous life. I was the product owner for PICA, which is an earlier, um, earlier version of Aspen. Um, and since then, I've been working in discovery for a couple of larger library software companies. Um, but I've always felt like Aspen is where I want to be. I'm really excited to be back here today. I love how um, Aspen just really puts the patron at the center of everything that they're doing and puts library partners first. Um, so I'm excited to be doing that. I really think we, we just have such a huge capacity to, um, to imagine the, the future for our libraries and then actually build it. Like we get to actually imagine this and then do it. So I'm really thrilled to be here today working with all of you on Aspen. I wanted to say a few things about my role. I'm gonna be wearing a couple different hats. So one is going to be um, support and partner success. So after libraries are through implementation, if you have um, issues or questions or wanna know more about how to use a specific feature better, I'll be helping with that. Uh, like Morgan said, I'll also be working with some of you in community. I'll have a little bit more to say about that later. And I'm also hoping to, be used, uh, to use some of the experience I've gained over the past years working in product. Um, to kind of get us to a place where we have a little bit more um, we can do a little bit longer term planning together um, and you can have some more transparency and input into the process. Um, maybe work on some requirements um, and get some input. So um, thinking with that and that last goal in mind, I've spent the first few weeks here reviewing most of the outstanding tickets um, to see what kind of ideas are out there. And it's really cool. There are a lot, a lot of good ideas. And another thing I noticed is that there's a lot of overlapping ideas um, and that the ticketing system right now isn't necessarily the best for that because you're communicating kind of like one-on-one -on -one with Bywater. Um, so I'd like to get maybe, we have this opportunity here in this meeting to talk about features, which is great, but maybe get some software going where um, you can see what everyone else is recommending and we can build on each other's ideas. Um, so having said all of that, we have uh, actually quite a bit, I'm, as I'm learning of software kind of in the pipeline um, coming up, you know, we're putting Aspen on top of um, Evergreen, an entirely new ILS. Um, we're looking at some more sophisticated library card registration and a whole bunch of other ideas. So um, it'll probably be a little while before we get all of this going and are able to implement some of those ideas, but I'd like to get the community going so we can organize and make sure we have things prioritized and ready to go. Uh, so one last thing, I said community. So um, I, some of you reached out to me over Slack that I've known previously or that we met in one-on-one -on -one conversations to kind of go ahead and, and start this. So I thought, let's just organize a meeting and um, we can basically, you guys, you're the community, you can start organizing the community. I'll just set up the meeting um, and we can start having um, that conversation and figure out what you want the goals of the community to be, um, how you wanna organize. So um, I'm gonna put, let's have that meeting. I was thinking two weeks from today, we already have the Aspen gatherings and the Aspen updates in a minute at kind of this time. Um, and then at that meeting, we can decide if there's if there's a better time than, um, than Thursdays at four Eastern, but I will put a link in uh, like all the meetings, you're all invited and we'll start talking community and get that organized and I'm um, good to go. So that was a lot of words, but thank you for having me and um, I'll turn it back over to Morgan. Awesome. Um, I guess before I move on to the, to the next thing, does anyone have any questions um, for Jordan about um, that meeting or how to get involved or anything about that? Just a reminder, you can always just put stuff in the chat if you don't want to unmute yourself. That's totally fine. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, so it's, and Jordan, is it meant to be kind of its own separate thing from the gathering, like the gathering is still going to happen, right? I think we'll always have like a monthly meeting, but one of the, like this is, it's not 
for me to say, right? Like this is your community. Um, if it makes sense for you guys to maybe do a little bit more with the gathering or take over part of the gathering, like maybe that's what we would do. I mean, I like, I, we just need to talk, right? We need to figure out what you want. So um, the goal, my goal is to come and listen and um, kind of represent Bywater there. And of course, there are probably other Bywater, everybody from Bywater is welcome to come, whoever is welcome to come. Um, but just kind of to hear what the community wants and the, what the, how the community wants to be working more closely with Bywater. Um, and we got some good comments and links in the chat. So, okay. all right. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you do have any more questions um, about joining the, um, you know, the Aspen community discussions to help shape the future of the community, definitely um, check out the link that Jordan posted. Um, you can also contact her directly on Slack or by email, um, or you can put your questions in the chat too. So I am going to turn it over to our next agenda item, which is um, Cal has some really, really exciting updates about our app launch. So go for it, Cal. Hey, everybody. Thanks, Morgan. Um, I just want to let you know that we do have our next um, Aspen updates in an instant for the next release on November 4th at 4 p.m. Eastern. So we also wanted to do um, around the same time. Um, a launch party for the Aspen Lead app. So we were thinking around right afterwards, around 4.30 Eastern. Um, we're just gonna have a little um, get together just uh, to lo officially launch the app. We're gonna be sharing our entire logo package with you um, so that if you want to use those um, logos and create some marketing material around the app for your patrons. Um, I also um, want to start creating some templates for you guys. So I just kind of wanted to see if you all had any input on what might be helpful to either like hand out or be able to print yourselves. Um, I was thinking, you know, we'd share the whole graphics package um, like we do with the Aspen logos um, during implementation. Um, and then I could make like a bookmark or a little flyer just with information on how to, to download the app, um, if that all sounds good. And um, I don't know if there's anything else that you guys might find helpful for marketing or promotion of the app. We got a woohoo in the chat. <laughs> I'm just gonna put my email address too. So, you know, if you guys think of something after this that you think would might be helpful, um, or you can just DM me in Slack, um, Cal Bywater. Um, then just let me know. I'm going to start working on them, but I would like to have at least something to give you all at the launch party um, on November 4th. So um, any other questions about that? I will send out an invite to everyone. It'll just be like a fun little, maybe like 30 minute thing just to kind of like hype up Lita and um, get all that information to you all. So yeah, it looks like Raymond is asking in the chat for specifically social media sized images. So we can definitely get those. I added it to my list. Okay, so let me, I see in the chat, Hannah from Salina. Hello, Hannah <laughs> is asking, um, and that's kind of going on to our next topic a little bit with placards. Um, so Hannah is asking, is there a placard or something that we could make that sits at circulation with a QR code patrons can scan to download the app? Yeah, we could. Um, so like kind of like a folding tent sort of situation or like a little um, thing to go in a clear like vinyl sign. Wrap card, larger bookmark. Okay. Yeah, um, if you know the specific sizes that you're looking for or if it, like dimensions like portrait oriented or, <laughs> or vertical landscape oriented. Um, just let us know. And, and I mean, Cal, uh, you know, she can make the things in Canva and then provide you with downloadable versions ready to go or, well, and or um, the template that you can then use to resize, modify to your needs. Good idea. Oh, Dorothy, um, are you on, are you using an iPhone, Dorothy? Hi, Dorothy. 
Yes, I am using an iPhone and I have tried it so many times that I now remember my library account number and that's bad news. <laughs> it, it's, you know, glass half full. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I know that we are aware of the issue um, on iPhones okay. where, um, yeah, it's not letting you leave the library card number and go to right. the moment yes, I get into the yes. pin field, everything resets to, I haven't selected a library and my library card is gone. And then I type it in another 15 times and yell at my boss. Just ask Vicky. Um, the uh, other question I have on that as a design type of thing, when I am trying to log in, you know, and I'm in the login field, my keyboard covers all of the login information. And I think if you could have the login information on top and the logo on the bottom, that would eliminate that whole problem, you know? So, because if I'm typing now, I can't see if I put my number in correctly. Just Thank no you. idea. And that's a pain in the neck. Yeah, this is your favorite feedback. German talking and saying it as it is. <laughs> <laughs> we see that's what we like though we want to hear it like yes. it is and that's why um, i logged in real quick we're in between two interviews in here so i thought oh i just want to tell them the thing oh good well yeah you are always welcome to these that's, I, I just added you so i'm, I'm really glad that you um showed Sweet. up <laughs> yeah um so kirsten is working so hard on the app she is doing all the app Yay. things um she knows about it uh do you happen okay. to have like an estimated time of update for iPhone users. I know that an obstacle is it takes a really long time for the Apple store to approve our updates too. Uh, I think we're planning on pushing out the next update before the launch party thing. Okay. So the launch is on November 4th. So sometime before, in between now and the launch, we should have another update where you can sign in. I have a workaround. So <laughs> what I had done was that I had a um, cookie or not a cookie, but a, but my password information saved on my iPhone from, you know, like our other catalog. And I think using the yeah. Aspen catalog. And yeah. so if, when you just click into that barcode, click the little passwords line that's right above the keyboard okay, and just go get it that because I and, have mine saved. So that should work. Yeah. So it just inserts it and you're good. But related to that, how do you want us to report bugs with? Oh, you should be able to just submit them through the regular ticketing Ticket. system. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know how you wanted it. <laughs> um, so yes, ticketing system, definitely that will 100% get it to us. Okay. Let me make sure I'm caught up in the chat here. Um, okay. If you're having trouble logging in, it would be helpful for us to know what device what library, and if you can see your library at all, or if you're just not even seeing that, um, so that we, we can make sure that we've got that covered, because we have to make sure the configuration is right on the back end as well. Um, so we've updated a bunch of people to make sure that they can see the production site. Um, and then it's hard to see the version if you're not in the app. <laughs> so if you're having trouble logging in, but if you are in the app, if you have the version, um, from the about screen that that's helpful as well so for us we saw our library niceville and that tip from chanel there worked like a charm i am Perfect. in now because i had my aspen login saved to my iphone Cool. It's not perfect, but it's workable. <laughs> so. And I think other people have had luck entering the pin first and then the barcode. I tried that about 15 times. Oh, okay. didn't work for me. <laughs> Sometimes I do that on my computer yeah. when it clicks through too fast. But so that did not work for me. But the having it saved did get me in. So okay. at least we're there. So that way I can do some testing. So that's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Yay. See, community helping each other. It's amazing. We love to see it. Um, okay. So any other, I guess while we were on the app train, any other questions about app things? I see Jamie's suggestion in the chat for a branded Aspen QR code. That would be pretty snazzy. Maybe we can look into something like that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure um, that we get you stuff that you can use, um, QR codes 
and no QR code so that people can just scan and get the app. Great ideas. All right. Speaking of ideas, um, let's talk about resource sharing. Um, and you know, we are we are wanting your feedback on that. We when we've already heard a lot of feedback about how you want to be able to you know share your ideas or um, you know see what other people have made, grab templates for things, all that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things that has come up um, perhaps more than others is uh, for placards. Um, being able to uh, share placards, especially standard ones that, you know, a lot of libraries have the same kind of resources like, you know, Learning Express and Mango Languages. So being able to have that kind of stuff. All right. Thanks for coming, Dorothy. All right. Um, let's see. So does anyone have any ideas about what they would like to see in shared resources or how you would like to be able to access those things. What are your thoughts? Shared lists. Hmm. Award winners, etc. Oh, I guess the consideration with shared lists is, I mean, I perhaps if they're award winners, they're more likely to be in multiple catalogs. I guess it could work. I don't know if Mark has thoughts about the ability to share lists. Because if your collections aren't 100% the same. Yeah, the challenge with that, of course, is the collections are different. We do have a couple of different ways to think about it. So do we want like index centrally everybody's collection? Um, or would it just be that you're pulling the lists in and it would only obviously have your things? Um, so lists are a definite possibility. Um, definitely all of the grouped work IDs. The nice thing, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone has the same grouped work ID for every instance. So um, we're, we are able to do that. Um, so, yeah. Okay, let me, oh, so someone's editing, good. So yeah, lists slash browse categories. Okay. Uh, I I think, I think, well, for me, um, what's an even higher priority than having shared, uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm having a Resources. Day. So, yeah, um, uh, placards, that's what I was trying to think of. So more than shared placards is a way to deal with multiple placards within, like for us, a consortium. Um, and I know that you guys are thinking about this uh, because we've already had the problem of, I created a consortia wide placard for Mango languages. And then one of the academics wanted to make their own. So I turned it off for them so they could make one. And then they stole most of the good search words for me. So yeah, so for us, and that, and the other thing is, is I put, as I make more placards, I may be stealing search words from somebody else who's made a placard. And I, unless I go through every single placard and look at all the search words, I have no idea. So let me, um, and so I, 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 yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, so for this specific resources, like the Mango Languages, um, did they, was it a situation where you had different language that you know that you wanted for each um, placard to promote to like academia versus the public? Or um, the main thing was was that the, since they're an academic, they wanted to point the user to their lib guides that go into more detail, and then from there send them to Mango. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, you could select the multiple libraries. But yeah, if they're totally different, but for the same resource, right. yeah, I see what you're meaning. Um, okay, so we've got that noted in the agenda. Um, so that's good to know. Thank you for that feedback. Um, anyone else have any thoughts about resource sharing? I have kind of a question for the group. As we're talking about it, it sounds a lot like what you're wanting is a like a central repository where if there's a somebody could push a placard up there to share and you could pull a copy down. 
Um, is that accurate or are you thinking more like something that would sync? Um, so if somebody updated their search words on a placard, it would update everywhere. I'm hearing that's not what you want. What you want would be the ability to copy, but I kind of want to um, just probe into that and validate that a little bit. I see the first one. Okay. Definitely the first one. That would be yep. <laughs> the thinking would be, we are, yeah, we're sort of in the same place as Chanel. We have so many that it's already kind of hard to manage them. Okay. And then with the search terms, it sounds like one of the pain points right now is um, that the, the searches, we need search for consortia. So separate search terms for consortia or for individual member libraries. Um, so I, I, so in my mind, it would be, so whatever libraries you apply that placard to, those search terms would work in that context. And when I say that, I realize I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I mean, you could say if the person's on a particular library's profile, it should use the search terms that for the placards that are assigned to their profile. But yeah. I thought that Man. was how it worked. Am I mistaken? Oh no, you're right. It is. It's just I, I'm I'm tired. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess that made me piggyback off or just something thinking about a shared repository. Um, so it's kind of not really related. Um, I really like the idea of the repository. Um, I think something to think about is um, I've had requests for more statistics for like click on plac um, placards, which we're kind of tracking through Google Analytics right now. So that wouldn't necessarily mess anything up. But um, lists are another thing that um, libraries have wanted statistics on. So I think just kind of keeping in mind how might we be able to, if we're doing lists, maybe it's, yeah, again, a matter of like copying them down and having your own statistics if we're able to, to do that eventually. That makes complete sense. I can also see it it being helpful, and I have no idea how I would do this. This is like pie in the sky, of getting statistics within the repository somehow so that you could see what if the people had shared was successful so that you could copy the successful ones. Um, yeah, but again, I no idea how we do that yet, but just that being maybe of another value of statistics if we could figure out how. So something else I just thought of was that, and I don't think you can do this, so correct me if I'm wrong, but is to be able to copy a placard. So, I mean, like, for example, I worked long and hard on the CSS for the first placard I created, and now it's something that everybody else wants to steal because it works so well. But they have to go into one of mine, copy the CSS, you know, paste it over. So if they could just copy one of my placards and then change the image, or in the case, if they're wanting to make their own mango thing, they could just leave the image and change the text, the link, whatever. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Um, and I know that there, so we've had the desire to copy placards. Um, I've heard you know, desire to copy web builder pages as well. Um, so definitely we're going to put that on. Yep. On the and, and then we or you guys could put in templates for different styles of placards. And then, you know, all you'd have to do is copy the template and make your own placard based off that look some yays and yeses yeah agreed that's a great idea too um because i you know one of our goals i think is to make it easier for you to make you know everything look awesome and promote your resources um let's see what's going on in the chat we're hanging out here for flat goods and they're not pretty yet yet i hear you ann but you'll get there Templates for web builder would be nice too. I agree. <laughs> Very good. Any other thoughts? Questions? Something that's come up with placards a few times has been um, when you use two terms, 
which one shows. Um, how, do, how would we want to handle placards when there are multiples for the same term? Would that be a carousel? Would they be stacked? Would they just be displaying one right like they do right now? Any preferences there? One thing we saw in usability testing is that patrons were really hesitant to click on a placard that looked too ad-like. Um, especially, you know, for like an e-resource or something, you kind of want it to look more like a search result. And so I'd be a little concerned about like a kind of carousel situation, Look, you know, again, like just kind of looking more like an ad than like, no, this is really a resource and we want you to click on it and use it. It's not just like a some advertisement from a ran, you know, random vendor, like we've, we've paid for this and we want you to get into Ancestry or whatever it is. Nice, but not too nice. Yeah. I can see not wanting to like, because the library has such the brand of not advertising, right? And you wouldn't want to kind of give the impression that you are offering advertising too. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. I think for there's a place for it for like, a, yeah, like Arlington had those great read-alikes that were super stylized. Um, and I think that's like kind of clear what that is, but um, but yeah, like out of the box, especially if they look too different than a result, then people won't think, oh, that's that's a resource. So maybe we a stack. We should make them the click baity. You, you won't believe what they learned. Yeah. <laughs> you won't believe the fourth resource. <laughs> <laughs> Be thinking maybe too about what this repository would look like, how you would expect to find placards. Is there any value in adding some information about the placard so libraries can find it? Like, is this about a database? Is this, what audience is this intended for? Um, because if we're building kind of a, a shared repository that we're gonna have to search through because you all have such amazing content, um, we want all the content, but we also don't wanna be create something that you can that you can find. So that's kind of, my mind's going to how would how would you find that you could search for mango to find the mango one, but how could you find interesting ideas? Um, and what what would that shared what would that shared repository look like in terms of searching and using it, the usability for all of you using the repository? Yeah, I think definitely some categories for like um, you know databases, um, read-alikes, events. I'm not sure what else people might use the placards for. We could also we could also use those for displaying content a little bit later. If, if again, this is further in the future. If we know a lot of if we know something about our patrons and we have different databases for adults versus kids, like we don't want to present. Um, Oh, the name of the the auto, Chilton's. We don't want to present like Chilton's, like big and bold to like small kids that are looking up cars. Um, we have different age databases for different purposes. So I could see um, maybe some use cases there for um, being able to present different placards to different age groups for authenticated patrons, maybe. Okay, I'm seeing a couple comments in the chat um, from Raymond and Chanel about um, as far as being able to search for templates for placards or web builder, um, it looks like the priority might be style over content. So that is an, that's interesting. Well, I think, I think both is perfectly valid because for me, um, one of the, the difficulties was putting forth in front of all my libraries here's the possibilities of what you could do. Cause they just kept asking me, well, what are we supposed to do with this? And I could sort of maybe tell them in terms of content, you know, what thematic things they could do, but in terms of visually what they could do, that was a lot harder. So templates versus like literally copy everything and just plop it like mingle languages here's insert my link done versus more just something that you could repurpose for a whole bunch of different things is that what you're saying uh, well I, I mean again i probably both because um for me to just have uh pings of ideas is that's all i need because i'll just rebuild it to whatever specs we want it 
but I can certainly see for other libraries who maybe the administrator is not so technical that just being able to click a, or I don't know, click a button, click an import button and specify the, the placard you want and it pulls in all the code and then you just change the things that are specific to your library, like maybe a different URL, for example. So it kind of sounds like it would be really important as we're searching the repository to have a preview so that it's not just extremely yeah extremely children see that all have different layouts and that kind of thing so. yes very much so because i want my libraries to like go to something like that and point and say i want something just like that but for this other database All right, really good ideas, everyone. This is this is wonderful. Um, let's see. So Cal is is furiously noting everything down on the agenda. So thank you, Cal, <laughs> making sure we get all these ideas in here. Um, any last thoughts about anything you'd like to see or priorities? Oh. Thanks for yeah, thanks for contributing in the chat and speaking up. These are all wonderful ideas. Um, so as far as I guess how we're gonna proceed, um, what, what do you think our next steps are, Jordan? I think um, we have a couple different options. Again, that's something we can talk about at the community meeting. What I'd like to do is kind of get all these on a table, on the table, gather all the ideas together and then work with whoever's interested in participating in this conversation to prioritize them because some are gonna be easier than others. So maybe in the short term, we could get templates in there and it's nothing shared. We don't have to build that big infrastructure, but you need templates, you need easy things for your staff and we can just give you some templates um, and maybe that would be number one or maybe not. Like that's, I think it's um, prioritizing these and getting what we would call like minimum viable, like a minimum viable, not products, it's not a product, but um, minimum viable requirements in there. And the first thing that, that you would wanna see. Uh, and then, yeah, as we're putting together that roadmap, getting it on there uh, and then getting it built. So just a little bit, a li this, is, this has been really great to hear everyone's input and what you want. Um, now we just need to get it organized and put into a set of requirements. And so that might be something that, that we would do together or I would even do for you is put a set of requirements and say like, hey, is this what you wanted? And then you would all get to copy, comment on it and say like, yes, but, or exactly, or no, this is completely wrong. Um, and then we could revise it as a group from there. Great, thanks for, for clarifying that, Jordan. So um, yeah, if you, if you do come up with any questions about that, just reach out to us, reach out to Jordan, um, because the power is in your hands. We want to give you the power to help us prioritize and make things happen. Um, so if there are no other questions or comments about that, let's move on to the next section of the agenda um, where we talk about release things. So I believe this is, this is Mark. Yeah, so 21.13 came out, uh, whatever day. Um, so we've released this time to everybody in the implementation as well as test sites last Thursday, and then released to everybody who was in production this Tuesday. Um, we just wanted to get some feedback on how people thought that went, if it was useful to kind of do that staggered release um, so that we can give people a little bit of extra time to test kind of the final product before it, it goes to everybody in production. Um, if people like that way of doing it, we'll continue to do that in the future. Cool, we get one heartily approving of the new workflow. Um, any other thoughts on it or? More love it, so, okay. Well, two, two votes is unanimous in Slack or in Zoom, right? So, um, 
Cool. Well, well, we'll keep planning on doing that where we'll do that kind of that staggered release. The updates in an instant would happen kind of the day of that release into test um, and implementation sites. And then anybody who's soft launched or full launched would get it the following Tuesday. Doesn't sound like there's a lot of discussion around it, but <laughs> happy to take feedback if anybody has other ideas. So. I'm just so happy to get releases every three weeks that, you know, <laughs> you can do it however you want it. I'm used to like six months, sometimes a year. Which we, we've we had, I, I guess we can talk about that. We've had discussions. So this next release is going to actually be a four week release. Um, and we've had, we can discuss just for a minute or two if people want, we've been typically doing three week releases for Aspen. We can do, do people still like three week? Do people like four week? Do people want monthly to where every month it was the whatever last Thursday of the month we pushed to test and then the following Tuesday we we went to production um, there's pros and cons of each so the the nice thing with the every three weeks is it's a short enough time frame to make sure that little tweaks don't linger too long but long enough to get meaningful development but every four weeks works too um, Kind of do we want 12, 13, or however many releases? 52 divided by three is. Any thoughts or preferences? How many sites are running test? Like, do they run a test instance? Or five? I don't. Um, we have. Also, just in case anybody's not aware, we have a shared one for Bywater that anybody, like we're happy to give everybody a, a login to. So uh, if you don't have your own test site, we can set you up to be able to test. And we don't need to decide this now either, but. Yeah, when we talked about it, I think we were thinking we wanted to hear your feedback on like scheduling. If, if the releases come every three weeks and it's not like a set time, whereas something like this gathering, you know, it happens the pretty much the set time every month at a set time. So we were just wondering for like 2022 and the release schedule, if anyone had any preference or if it would be more helpful for your workflows to just know that like on the third, you know, week of the month, we're going to get a major update. And then there might be you know, a 22.1, what would be the 22.01.01. <laughs> yeah, in between um, the weeks, yeah. if there's something that needs to be patched, you know, Mark could always push that through. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's just kind of our both sides of the coin thinking on that. We can definitely there do some polls some or something. A hundred libraries, and it's kind of helpful to just say, like, it might, yeah, it might just be helpful to say like, yep, releases are the third Thursday of the month or whatever they ended up being. And um, people could kind of have that expectation. Um, I don't know like, how much our members are necessarily paying attention to the releases, but also it's, you know, um, I think a little bit like this new kind of system of going out to, to uh, test sites first and then production will help, but there's definitely like, you know, work on our end to um, test and make sure everything's um, working right. And then I feel like inevitably we always find little things yeah. <laughs> once we're live, uh, no matter how hard we try to test. So it might just be like less scrambling for you all and for us kind of, you know, just, I know that that kind of release dates are always like a little bit of a frenzy and then it sort of settles down. I, I would just say for Swan, we we as the this year is winding down, we begin planning. We plan out the entire kind of year's worth of membership meetings and user group meetings, you know, by the end of the year. So just to say we're gonna just drop in when those Aspen things are gonna occur, we can, you know, know how to navigate around everything. Yeah. 
or we could go to every six months. So. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> then we would have to leave you and find another vendor. <laughs> I don't think we would leave okay. You. <laughs> I I think w there is an assumption, at least that that you know, two weeks is we're not going to be in that mode forever. Right. Yeah. Unless Chanel really likes being in that mode. <laughs> I, I I mean, this is just so pleasurable for me. Um, I don't have to try to um, set up a schedule with the vendor to install the software. It just happens. Mm. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, I don't have to make a big deal about it because the catalog is going to be down for two hours, possibly. You know, it, it's just uh, yeah. so much easier. Okay. Well, it sounds like we're doing things good so far um, and that you're not super passionate about anything changing. Um, but yeah, if you if you do have you know feedback for release schedules and anything, um, that would be another reason to get involved in the community meetings. Um, try and influence desired. So well, good to know that it's working for everybody so far, especially the recent changes we made going to the test sites first. All right. Any other questions or thoughts about release schedules before we move on? Okay. We've had our piece with that. Okay. So now we'll just end with some open time at the end. Um, to kick off the open time, we wanted to give a shout out specifically to Yavapai because um, Addy pointed out to everyone and we all loved it. Um, the link is on the, um, and I think Cal might be putting in the chat. Um, they have a really cool browse category for kids called Tricky Topics. Um, so things like bullying and, um, you know, lots of um, difficult topics. <laughs> um, and when I was a youth services librarian, I, that's the exact kind of thing that I wish that I had at the ready to just, you know, be able to point on our catalog, like, look, it's right here, like, these awesome just links to our catalog are ready to go. Um, so, super awesome work, Yavapai. Um, Thanks, and everyone. Morgan. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And because you, we know how hard you worked on all that stuff. So, um, yeah, everyone check out those browse categories. The link is in the chat. It's really cool. Um, does anyone have anything that they want to share? Any cool browse categories you've made recently? Um, any placards? Anything you're doing with your library that you want to share? Because we try to keep up with everyone what you're doing, but sometimes we might miss something. a real book my gross brother <laughs> should be i just thought it'd be a good topic <laughs> well you know there are books about you know expecting a new sibling mm -hmm. so <laughs> definitely interested in that category come on i know you guys are working on cool stuff who's done something that you're proud of lately i would love to see things where people have just gone off and, you know, just done something really creative. I, I surf is as you guys release new catalogs, I go through them and I, you know, I find uh, translations to, to like different phrases. And I'm like, Ooh, we could steal that. That's a good idea. Or, you know, I look at their placards. I just, whatever I can find is just have some way to bubble up those cool ideas. Okay, bubble up, yeah. Huh. It sounds like, and I mean, maybe that's also something that the, you know, a depository could fill, um, you know, not only can you download templates and things, but it can be a source of inspiration too. 
Yeah, so something that Cersei Dynix does is on their the intranet for customers. Um, they have they they created a bunch of categories of like things like features you could add or things that you can customize a lot, and then they have an entry for all for well, I think for every customer that wants to participate, and then they specify which of those features they have on their their catalog or what, I, I guess it would just be the catalog. So yeah, and so that way, if you're interested in like, you're wanting to push your placards, you then go to that and you'd see which library systems have done stuff with placards and you would click to go through to their catalog. And presumably there'd be some information there like search for mango or whatever. It might be a good way to get started. I was envisioning like the WordPress themes. Pull them in, hack the code, publish it. Tar is going to kill me. <laughs> I feel like the awesome things are so easy to use. Just set your colors and go. We do have a couple of libraries doing some really cool things that are, I don't know that they're live yet, but I've seen somewhere it's just like, wow, <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanna see. Okay, so are we, what do you think about um, how the best way to, to get that out to you all? Like, how would you like to see that? Would you Would you want that out of a repository or, would that be something that you'd, you know, like to see featured in Aspen Weekly, or what do you all think? Uh, I've seen it done with just a, like a, a shared Google Sheet that each library can go and put the name of their library, the link to their catalog, and then whatever like search Mango for a kick-ass placard, or um, we really push the limits with browse categories or whatever to highlight what you should go take a look at on their catalog. Well, also, if, you, if you're doing a repository, you could put it into the code, I guess, so that the stuff, like the newest stuff shows first if you click on, or you could click on new, or, um, and have it up there for a certain amount of time, or somebody could um, self-identify with something that they think they put up there that's really cool, and have the cool section that somebody put it up there. And I mean, you could always take it off after six months because maybe you've had plenty of time, like it automatically goes away after a certain amount of time for people to look at it because it's not really cool and new anymore. It's still cool, but it's not new. So something like that, because if I'm in there anyway, and there's an easy way for me to like just sort it, then an, another place to check for that type of stuff is going to get, you know, cumbersome if I'm in there anyway to just look for stuff. Or you could put in the date when the whatever was added and that way you could sort by date and no one would have to, you know, put in new, take out new, et cetera. Yeah, kind of like the added in the last facet. <laughs> cool. Those are such great ideas. I love when you guys get talking and sharing all this stuff, it's amazing. All right, well, any last comments or questions for open time? Anything you wanted to bring up? Oh. They're all like, nope, it's Thursday afternoon. My coffee's worn off and I'm done. <laughs> I get you. All right, well, I think that we can probably just wrap up another awesome Aspen gathering. Um, if you do have any questions, you know, we'll hang out for another minute or so. But other than that, um, I think we're good. So thank you so much for coming today. Um, again, just want to reinforce, um, reach out to Jordan, or um, maybe we can paste that link in the chat again. 
um, to get involved with the community meeting. Um, so if you want a say in prioritizing and making stuff happen for Aspen and the whole community, we want you to get involved. Awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, Have a good day, everybody. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.